So coming up to this Black Friday or even this Christmas, you may be looking for a new CPU and you've nailed it down to two choices. And that is either the Ryzen 7 7800X3D or the Ryzen 7 9800X3D. You may be wondering how much of a difference is there with these two CPUs, especially when we look at some different things, where, which we're doing in today's video, by the way. We're gonna be looking at the 0.1% lows, have a big focus on that, in some of the most popular multiplayer titles at 1080p low settings and also 1440p high settings to see the differences between these two CPUs when it comes to a variety of games, but also when you wanna couple it with say an RX 9070 XT or on Nvidia's side, an RTX 4080 or a 5070 Ti, they're basically the same thing. And so when you're going for these more popular GPUs, how much of a difference is there between these two CPUs? And this is exactly the question we're gonna answer here today. And we'll start off with Counter-Strike 2, where we're looking at the 0.1% lows here in particular. At 1080p, you can see there isn't really much of a difference between all four of these scenarios here, whether it's a 7800X3D with a 9070 XT or the RTX 4080. And then if we go over the 9800X3D, it's a similar case, but you'll notice the average FPS for what it's worth is higher on the 9800X3D. But again, we're gonna be putting a different spin in today's video. For me personally, when I'm playing games, if I'm playing competitively at 1080p, I'm really looking at those 0.1% lows. And what they are, if you guys don't know, it is the worst FPS that will come out while you're playing a game. It's basically that lowest of low that happens. And if a game's stuttering, for instance, your average FPS might still be pretty high, but this number will be pretty low, as we do see in one of the titles that we've tested out here today. But we'll get onto all of that after we talk about the price, where the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, you can currently get this for around 285 US dollars delivered, pretty much worldwide, but keep in mind, depending on where you live, you may face tariffs and whatnot. But then we've got the 9800X3D, which is over $100 more expensive, even from AliExpress itself. However, the beauty of these prices that I'm showing you, you can save even more money with today's video sponsor, which gels perfectly with today's topic. Today's video is brought to you by AliExpress and their massive sales. Now, the CPUs that we're talking about, the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, already a really good deal. Then we've got the Ryzen 7 7700, which is an incredibly good deal too. And I also decided to buy myself this tablet for my son to help him with his homework and reading and things like that. This is a Lenovo tablet, which has also got a really good price tag. Now these prices are only not just this good value. You can also use some coupon codes, which I'm gonna be putting up on the screen for you guys. For instance, if you spend over 300 Aussie dollars, you can get 53 Aussie dollars off. Now in the US, there's also some really good coupon codes there. And again, I'll put all these coupon codes and links in the description below, but the best link is also one that is universal. And that is joining my team, the Tech Yes City team, where you can get up to 10% cash back from AliExpress, which you can then use on further purchases. Anyhow, I'll put some links in the description below, or if you're on a smartphone, I'll put the QR code up on the screen, and let's get back to the video. Welcome back to Tech Yesterday, and let's move on to an extremely popular title as of late. It's a newly released title, and it's called Ark Raiders. Now, this is a title that was actually pretty difficult to benchmark on because you spawn in different locations and there's no inbuilt benchmark. But from what it's worth, the game is actually running extremely well on both NVIDIA and AMD cards, considering it's just released, and those 0.1% lows are pretty good. Though one thing you may have on your mind with Arc Raiders is why are the 0.1% lows, that's the worst FPS, actually lower at 1080p than the are at 1440p, despite 1440p having lower average FPS. And this is one of those things where sometimes we see when games are completely uncapped, the engine itself can do a little bit of a weird thing when the FPS gets too high, and that's caused it to just throttle down to a certain level that's actually lower than that of a higher resolution, if that makes any sense. And we're actually seeing this across all four different scenarios here in the graph. And so essentially with this game, you may wish to cap it, the FPS, at your monitor's level, at least for the time being, because it is a newly released title. Though ultimately with Arc Raiders though, the hardware is running extremely well for a newly released title. But let's move on to the next title here, which isn't so the case of running so well. This is one of the titles that was on the top 10. It's called Escape from Duckov. Now, the game is pretty cheap. 
And I thought, well, why not give this a whirl and see how it runs? And here's where the game's uh, pretty fun. Like I can understand the appeal with it. However, in terms of its actual uh, capabilities of running smoothly on your hardware, here is where the 0.1% lows were actually pretty unoptimized. This game does need some patching. It does need some further optimizations. As we can see here, these 0.1% lows are just pretty awful across all different resolutions and across all different hardware. And it was mainly just a random jitter, especially as we're going to say loading something new up or if we're interacting and looting, it would just go crazy in terms of dropping off those 0.1% lows. But also another thing worth mentioning is the options here aren't really that intricate. There's not really a whole lot of graphical options to change. And for some odd reason, there's still like FSR 1. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing to have FSR 1 implemented in the game in 2025. I mean, there's FSR 3, FSR 4, and yeah, they're a lot better. They're continuing on with games that are newly released and they are doing very well. This is Battlefield 6. And here is where on both CPUs, we can see here the 0.1% lows are really good. And on both GPUs, they're actually really good too. Considering we're playing some multiplayer matches when I decided to do these tests, just to really look at these differences between these two CPUs. And one thing you'll notice here is at 1080p in particular, the Nvidia card does seem to do a bit better on those 0.1% lows in the AMD card. Then when we step it up to 1440p, it's pretty much a typical spread and as expected, even across uh, multiplayer benchmarks with a bit of variance here. But for what it's worth, looking at the raw differences between these two CPUs that we got in the video here today, there's not a huge difference for Battlefield 6. In fact, I think you're getting better value out of the 7800X3D, all things considered if you're going for one of these mid-range GPUs. Though, let's get onto a game that sort of flips the script, and it's one of the most bizarre in today's uh, benchmarks, besides Duck of having those terrible 0.1% lows. This is PUBG. I decided to give this a whirl. I haven't played PUBG in a very long time. And so I'm not really familiar with the game at all. And so I decided just to go to the training grounds and do the benchmarking here where there's actually players that enter the training grounds too. So it's not like you've just got no variance at all. You do have some players jumping in. There is some dynamics to be had here. And here's where we're seeing a weird difference, not so much in the CPUs. The CPUs are 7800X3D, 9800X3D, they're doing great. Average FPS, 0.1% lows are great. But in particular, the 9070 XT, I think it needs some patching here from AMD. Definitely when we look at what's going on at 1080p in particular, because it feels like 1080p is running a lot harder on the 9070 XT than it should be. And even though the benchmarks look normal, because I just decided to capture apples to apples here and just do the exact same spot. Uh, but one thing I noticed is as soon as I zoomed out, and then say turn the mouse to the left on the RX 9070 XT, the FPS would drop significantly. So the average FPS was just dropping off uh, depending on where I was looking in the map, even outside of the benchmarking. It was worth noting that the game was running better on the RTX 4080, especially at 1080p. When we stepped up to 1440p, it wasn't so much a problem, but 1080p was definitely a weird anomaly here with PUBG and so I'd like AMD to maybe look into that and patch that because a significant amount of players do play PUBG. It is a very popular title even to this date. Also the last thing with PUBG is there's three different API options. DX11 Enhanced was also giving out the most consistent performance here too. Though for the last title we're looking at none other than Fortnite with the new update, it's actually got the Simpsons update, which is like a mini season. It's actually a lot of fun. I do, <laughs> Fortnite has grown on me over the years. It is a very exciting game. And I do like how they constantly change up the maps and also the, the weapons, the skins, everything just is, is really cool. Like I'm learning to appreciate the game a lot more over time, especially because I play it with my son too. So it's a really cool game. Though with Fortnite in particular, 7800X3D, 9800X3D, they're performing really well across 1080p and 1440p. But one thing you'll notice here is the 9070 XT in particular is doing extremely well. They're, it's very polished. The drivers from AMD for Fortnite are extremely polished. They've done a great job here and it shows where the 7800X3D is running a lot closer to the 9800X3D, especially at 1080p as opposed to the RTX 4080. There seems like there's a little bit more driver overhead here 
for the 7800X3D and the 9800X3D, and that's causing the 9800X3D to then perform a little bit better on these charts as opposed to the 9070XT. And the 0.1% lows are also looking a little bit healthier on the 9070XT. However, for what it's worth, between these two CPUs, not a great deal of a difference. And this is also said for the last test I decided to do here, and that is the power consumption, just at 1440p high settings on Fortnite from the wall, just to see if you're just running these CPUs and you're maxing out your GPU, what kind of differences you're gonna see here. It's about 15 watts from the wall. Now for the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, that's the one that's getting a little bit lower power consumption. However, it is clocked a little bit lower to begin with. And so that's a lot of the times where the 9800X3D does gain its extra performance. Anyhow, with all that benchmarking out of the way, it is time to make a conclusion here for you guys with both these CPUs. And what I'm gonna say is, for me personally, the 7800X3D, when I look at that price of $285, and you can get a further discount by using those pretty like awesome seasonal coupon codes right now, uh, one thing that about this CPU is it's just incredibly good value, and I consider it still, after looking at today's results, a flagship CPU, right? The 9800X3D, it's a bit better, and I get the appeal there. You've got the latest and greatest. You've got the best in slot for gaming right now, but the 7800X3D, it's offering, in some cases, better value. So it's definitely worth not overlooking this CPU when it comes to putting together a new rig, or if you wanna upgrade, especially where you live, if you can get the 7800X3D significantly cheaper than the 9800X3D. I think it's going to be a great option for you. Now, the last thing you may wish to know about is the longevity here, the upgrade path. They're both very similar. They're both really contemporary CPUs. I think the 7800X3D, for instance, has a bigger boost over the 5800X3D than the 9800X3D has over the 7800X3D. That's because 7800X3D was just a pretty big architectural change and you also utilize DDR5 as opposed to the 9800X3D, it's more or less very similar to the 7800X3D, just it's got a higher clock speed and a slightly different architecture in terms of how it's been designed. But for what it's worth, both CPUs are absolutely phenomenal. I just think basically if you're thinking about getting a 7800X3D and you can save a good chunk of money, then it's definitely going to be a great option. And I wouldn't be insecure or hesitant about going for that over the 9800X3D. But of course, if you want the absolute best, then the 9800X3D is gonna do that too. But anyhow guys, both these CPUs, fantastic options. And I decided to do things a little bit different, focus on those 0.1% lows, but also test with more relevant graphics cards like the RTX 4080 slash 5070 Ti, they're very similar, and the RX 9070XT. GPUs that a lot of people are buying and also pairing with these two CPUs, because I speak to the retailers around Australia here and they're telling me what combinations people are buying at certain budgets. So this is definitely a very popular combination. And so with that aside, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comments section below, what was your favorite CPU and GPU combo, especially out of today's video and why. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.